Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel and to another walkthrough on one of my images. This time not a speed edit, but uh, a little bit more in depth as to how I'm going to edit the image. This is of the brilliant Ember Wolf from Studio Shoot. We did a short while ago. Uh, awesome model, if you don't already follow her on Instagram, and she's got TikTok and everything, then hop over and give her a follow. She's absolutely brilliant. And okay, here we go. To begin with, I'm just literally choosing the bits of the background that I don't want light stands and everything else and content to wear. Filling it in to give me a good base to start from. I've also altered the crop a little bit. I like to work in more of a medium format style crop, so like 5x4. Yeah, I'm literally just uh, content aware filling and using the healing brush to get rid of any areas that, that I don't really want any creases in my background. It's hand painted and it's hung, so it's a bit of a pain for creases and hairs sticking to it and everything. zoom in a bit closer and just uh, tidy up any minor imperfections. I mean, there's not a great deal to do ever on Ember Wolf, so um, that happened because I haven't rasterized the smart object that I was using. Uh, I no longer need to make any changes to it, so I've rasterized the layer and then just duplicated it to make sure I'm not working on my original layer. And I'm just going to tidy up any small blemishes or anything that need to be removed using the healing brush tool. If anything gets too close to an edge you'll see that I will use the clone stamp instead because the healing brush tends to, to muddy edges very close it takes a lot of the detail out so I'm going to hop down to the bottom in one second and you will just see just see here There's a hair just there that I need to get rid of. And if I used the healing brush, it would have bled the edge between the, the line of Benbolf's chin and the neck. So instead, I've used sample current layer with the clone stamp brush instead. And then, as soon as I'd done the, the first section of it that's very close to chin, I moved straight back to the healing brush and just followed the, the line of the hair to get rid of it. You'll notice I sample very, very close to the area that I'm trying to, to heal or to clone in to try to keep the, the colour and the texture uniform throughout so it doesn't jump out at you, there's been editing done. This bit was, would have proved problematic for the healing brush because you see it muddy the colours slightly and with all the stray fabric on the top uh, I moved to the clone stamp instead as preference and so what I will do is I will sample very close to the edge of the top and just follow the line moving down to remove the, the strands of fabric. tidy up at the end with just um, the healing brush to try and make the colours a little bit more uniform. I'm not so concerned at this point because I will be using uh, frequency separation to even out the skin when I come to, uh, to do that. So it's really having to scan over and just see if there's any extra little strands of fabric from the, the outfit. It's like a hair magnet, it's 
terrible this backdrop. <laughs> scan over to check I haven't missed anything, anything else needs to be done. Now merge the layers together. I always tend to rename the main layer that I'm working on background just because a lot of actions are dependent upon select layer background so if you have the background layer selected then it can be a bit can halt the action and cause it not to work. All I'm doing now is just creating helper layers so I've created the black and white layer over the top just a standard one and now I'm going to create a curves layer and I'm going to increase the decrease the, the blacks to make the contrast much more evident so anything that's um, that doesn't tie in with the rest of the skin just becomes a lot more obvious than just viewing it um, in colour creating dodge and burn layers so I aim to not zoom in like too close as there's not really much need with the, the effect I'm going for with this portrait but I'm going to obviously lighten the darker areas slightly using a large soft brush or just soft brush at a very low flow and I'm going to be using frequency separation to even it out a little bit more but I'm, I don't like to be too heavy handed with uh, frequency separation because it can make make skin look very uh, doll like which uh, so I, I much prefer to dodge and burn usually but I will hop in and do a little bit of evening out skin tone and everything I usually use gradient maps to do that but because there was so little to do with this one I just did in frequency separation instead go in and run the frequency separation action. It's at a very low level because I don't really plan on making any um, adjustments to the, the detail at this point. I'm literally just going to use the colour layer, the centre one which I'm just going to rename skin. It's really important to, re to name all your layers. Especially when you use as many layers as I do, because you just get really lost. Good tricks to, to choose the move tool, so uh, V and then use the command option, hold it down, click on the layer that you want to actually get to and you should select that in your layers palette, but naming them is obviously easier. So all I'm doing is choosing a low flow brush, using my eyedropper set to a 5x5 average and I'm just selecting very close to the area that I'm going to be smoothing out and just brushing in very lightly just to unify skin tones a little bit. Since it's such a small difference, hasn't really altered any of the details, just, uh, just ties the skin tones together a lot more. I 
length of the, the bit with all of the, the strands across her had obviously adjusted the skin tone very slightly so I was just using the frequency separation to blend that in a little bit more as well. Once again keeping very close to the, the area that I'm colouring so I'm not I'm not looking to to change the colour on anything, I'm just looking to even out the skin tone. Obviously you get certain areas with different blood flow like tips of fingers that are more in shade here because the the cowl or kimono was uh, was covering so just brighten those areas slightly using it as well. It's going to bring in some cherry blossom images that I've taken in my garden so it's going to see if we'll find a way to, to blend them with the background. Obviously it's difficult because they are very bright and the background is, is dark as well as the darker image. So I originally thought I would go for a multiply layer and just use it as like a shadow silhou silhouette um, texture on the back. But instead I decided to, to cut it away from the white background, the sky, and uh, try to place it And here's a little trick for when you're trying to, to minimize those horrible white edges that you get when you make a selection. So if you choose your layer mask, set a Gaussian blur at one pixel and hit OK. Then go, make sure you clicked still onto your layer mask and then image adjustments levels and then take in the sliders. So you'll see what's happening is making it lighter. Do it from the other side it will minimize, it will take it take it to darker and if you come into the top section here and drag in it will take your edges outwards or inwards so as I drag from that side and from the middle side you'll see that the lines surrounding the blossom get smaller, they shrink, it's like it's hiding the white so I do that with, with pretty much all my selections, so it's a brilliant trick going to play around with the opacities of the cherry blossom layer which I thought would be nice and easy to do and it wasn't it was a massive pain in the arse so I had to spend a lot of time tinkering with that which is why I've cut a little section of this out because it was literally just me shuffling things around for ages I've imported another cherry blossom used exactly the same way of selecting it tried to get rid of the white now I'm going to place it into the document and use the same check this uh, I'm using selective colors just to try to get rid of some of the white before I use the layer mask trick to get rid of the white edges I'm just brushing out some areas that I'm not going to need or use Filter and then blur. Once again, go to blur one pixel and then into image adjustments. Make sure you're still on the layer mask and just take in your sliders, which will decrease the edge, decrease the opacity, take the white away, or vice versa if you need to. It's 
going to duplicate this to ensure that I'm not working on the original layers. Try to work non-destructively until I'm sure I'm not going to need them again. And I'm going to use Blendif to take some of the white out of the cherry blossoms again. I'm going to split the handle in half by using the Option key. If you're on a Mac. Alt, I think, if you're on a PC. And just fine tune that a little bit so it blends in with the background a little bit more. Once again, used gradient on the layer mask to hide the left hand side, and I'm using the properties to, to lower the opacity of the, the transparency of the layer mask. Once again, grouped and named. using a clipped hue and saturation layer to try to even the tones. I find my, my photography has a lot more impact if there's not too many colours and too many tones. That's a lot more subtle rather, it's a bit more um, fine art. And we adjust the layer mask after using the gradient on the mask again. create curves layer because I'm going to do a, a vignette so an overall darkening of the image which I'm then going to use a hide all mask on and just reveal around the edges and I've used the I don't know what that gradient is called but it's, it's a bar so it um, shows the mask in the center and it has a slow gradient going to the top and bottom to hide the mask, but all I'm doing now is just removing or adding the mask rather to Ember to make sure the darker bar is not crossing her. And I'm going to do the opposite now. So I'm going to create a curves layer with, which is lighter. I'm going to use the select object. And then I'm going to feather the selection so there's no hard edges. And I will invert the selection. Switch to radial gradient to add a light to the backdrop to draw attention to the center of the frame. It's just a little bit of a, a helper. I mean, your eyes are instantly drawn to the red, so the ears, the lipstick, and eyes. So this is just a little extra helper to um, draw attention where you want it in your image. She's placed center, central of the frame anyway. So I'm just going to now dodge and burn the ears, just uh, darken the areas, in the creases slightly, and slightly lighten the the edges. And on anything that I want to stand out a little bit, make this look a bit more shiny add a bit of more speculative detail to it any of the highlighted areas on the kimono here i'm just just raising the highlights a small bit i don't really need to deepen the shadows because it's black already so i will i will leave that until later when i've decided if i want to have more of a matte effect or more of a contrasty effect So 
So once again, it's just little details to, to make the image pop as a whole. I'm just duplicating my dodge and my burn layers to so I'm not overly working on one of them. So if I take it too far, I could just rub it out. But you know, this way just makes it easier for controlling opacity and things. So I'm just literally highlighting some individual hairs here to in the ears, make them stand out, make them a little bit more, um, a bit more stylized. And Wolf actually makes these ears for other cosplayers as well, and for well for anyone doing photo shoots. So, I'm sure if you send her a message, she does. Um, she makes props, makes ears, makes some amazing props. So, an overall curve layer for adjustments because I want to adjust the irises. So, I'm going to take that very high. Just ignoring the rest of the image, this is literally just for the irises. So I'm going to zoom in, hide all on the layer mask, and I'm going to reveal the curves layer just in the irises. Soft brush, low flow, usual. And then because the curves layer has lightened the overall layer, I'm going to add in a hue and saturation layer clipped to the layer mask below and just increase the saturation to bring some more impact back to the eyes. That's me just clicking and copying the layer mask from the curves layer beneath onto the human saturation layer and making some further adjustments. I'd ordinarily be tempted to make them slightly more red to tie in with the ears and the lipstick a little bit more, but once I'd done this hue and saturation, I actually quite like the subtle effect of it. Here I'm going to just adjust the reds, add, the, uh, add a little bit more impact to them. The fox ears have gone a little bit muted, so I'm just going to bring a little bit of that colour back. I'm using a pressure sensitive Wacom tablet with this, so a lot of the time you see me go over the edges and it might look like I'm actually drawing upon the other, like, like the kimono, the black, but I'm just pressing lighter on the tablet so to make the, the uh, pen point small. going to add some highlights to the hair. Once again the same has happened with the, the irises, it tends to mute the colour when it brightens it, so I will go back over the areas I'm lightening now with a slight increase in saturation afterwards.
is a little trick for just adding a bit more specular detail to your highlights just to really draw attention to eyes and to glossiness on, on lips or eyes anywhere the light's hitting. We're basically just creating a new layer of drawn on with a hard edged white or soft edged white brush and all I'm going to do is set the layer to screen and then use blend if so that the black takes away from the highlight so it only shows on the the lighter areas and then once that's done I'll lower the opacity slightly and it just adds an extra pop to catch lights and specular areas head into the infinite texture panel which is um, the Milky Way stars just in the center test out some of the the different effects just by flicking through them by holding a uh, choosing your move call move call move tool um, holding shift and plus or minus to cycle through the different blend modes I do this a lot because you never know what you're going to get, especially with the randomness of the infinite texture panel. It can send you off in directions that you had no idea you needed to go in. So it's uh, it's very useful for creativity because it can just shoot up all kinds of new ideas. So once you've set, I've settled on this, and I'm just going to mask to hide all, and then just use the gra the radial gradient to just introduce, bring it back in in the corners. Going to fade it slightly and adjust the opacity of it. And then into the infinite texture panel again. I'm just going to create a flare. Obviously, it stands out a massive amount. I'm just going to scale it and move it to the position I want. The right lights obviously coming in from top left. So, top camera right. So, I'm just going to place that there. I'm going to mask it away from Ember Wolf. And using Blend If, I'm going to remove the slightly darker areas from it. Blend it out by splitting the bar in half. And then I'm going to adjust the the hue of it to match it closely to the backdrop. You could either do that using the different blend modes, or you could do that using hue and saturation, as I did. I'm going to just be careful to just leave a small amount of the the light hitting. The, the left hand side of Emberwolf because that was the direction the light was coming in so it might look unnatural if I completely removed the directional light completely from there. It's going to add a little bit more particle texture a little bit more? a lot more particle texture from um, the infinite texture panel again brought the layer in mask, usually mask all and add it back in but in this because I wanted it over the entire backdrop I did the reverse and just added a, an ordinary layer mask and just removed the effect from the centre matching the tone using human saturation clipped layer to the texture Once again, I've left some areas not masked out so it looks natural and so it blends in together. And just cloning in small areas into the, the, into the, the texture where I felt it didn't have enough. And that jump there was just from uh, the infinite colour panel where I'd, I'd done what I don't normally do and got a bit carried away before and actually added in uh, a hue and saturation style layer just to adjust the tones but I realised I wanted to add in extra textures so I deleted that section of the video. So I'm now just going to hop into Infinite Colour which I use in conjunction with the Infinite Texture panel. 
once again, absolutely brilliant for adding that little bit of randomness and sending you off in directions you weren't sure about, or if you don't have any ideas, it just sparks a little bit of creativity. Brilliant together, I thought. And what I'll do, what you'll see me doing here, is I will use the infinite colour, the randomness, the create button. And then what I'll do is once I find a look that I like, I will copy that to a new layer. So that's Shift, Control, Option E, I think it is on Mac. And I'll paste it to a new layer and then I'll just mask the entire layer out and then just obviously reveal it on sections I want the effect to appear on, like for this, the ears for example. Now I know the red areas look nice with the, the extra warmth, but I didn't want the extra warmth on the skin. So all I'm doing is, is keeping the entire layer hidden except for, I'm, I'm basically cherry picking bits off each layer that I think work works well like that. Well I will like how it makes the backdrop a little bit more purple but I don't like it's how it affects the skin. So I will mask it off the skin completely in the hair and all the red and just leave it in the background. Making sure that I use gradients where I can to keep the effects subtle, the blend between the two. one made the added kind of a duller purple to the, the shadows and a bit more of a subdued look. So trying to keep a bit more warmth coming in from the from the uh, left hand side of frame, right hand side of frame. Just a bit more atmosphere from the tops and sides. You see it draws the attention in from the, the bottom of the frame. I'm going to add in luminosity masks. This is uh, Jimmy McIntyre's Easy Panel. Absolutely brilliant. I use it for everything. So he does uh, an upgrade Raya Pro, I believe, which uh, is a lot more in depth like masks, but luminosity masks rather. In this case, I only wanted to slightly highlight the skin. <clears throat> so I will hop in to my channels. I will choose the the highlights to slightly add, and then I'll add the curves layer using the mask from that channel. And then we'll hop back in and choose one for the shadows as well. I usually use a massive amount of curves, layers to to even out the tones, to brighten the highlights, to make them more matte, or to, to do the same with the shadows. But I only wanted one or two with these, so I'm literally just going to hop in and grab a shadow one. So I'm just going to choose this shadows head back in with the selection create a curves which will automatically apply the layer mask to that and then I'm just going to decide whether I want to drag downwards to make it deeper or drag upwards to make it more matte to take some of the shadow out some of the darkness out of the shadows I'm going to stick with just below just to bring the shadows down a tiny bit to not make it too contrasty but just to, to add a little bit more impact very small amount Obviously I was a bit unsure about which way I wanted to go with the shadows, but there we go. I head back in and delete the luminosity masks because they take up a massive amount of space. The uh, file size will shoot up when you use them, so make sure you delete them after you've finished with them. Otherwise, we have a very slow file. And there we are. That's the finished image. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe, it's very much appreciated. Take care, stay safe, thanks, bye bye.